Welcome everyone to another night review. Today we have the 2021 Mazda 3 hatchback. And in this night review, we're gonna take a look at these exterior lights, the interior lights, get it out on the road and check out how well these adaptive headlights do. Now let's go ahead and start up front. So this is your first time tuning in for a night review. I do them on a regular basis. Be sure to subscribe for more and check out the full review coming out soon after this video. But first things first, this is the turbo model and it's the premium plus package. So we've got everything. We've got the adaptive front lights. Check out these LED headlights. These are the signature LED headlights. This also comes with LED daytime running lights. LED headlights are standard on every trim, but only the premium models give you the adaptive function. We'll talk about how that adaptive function works in a little bit. You can see we also get an LED turn signal. So you've got full LED up front, a really cool and unique design. You're not gonna find fog lights on here. That is one thing, but as we come out, you'll see that you have an amber marker light on the side. Plus you've got a crisp LED light in that mirror as well. And this color is the Soul Red Crystal Metallic. It is beautiful and gorgeous, especially at night and with Mazda's design. It looks a little more orangey on the camera than what it actually is in real life, but trust me, it's a gorgeous paint. But in the back, you've got some LED here as well for the taillights. Got the same signature design with those circles around there, and that's an LED turn signal. Very crisp, it's like four independent bulbs. You've got LED license plate lights as well. And overall, this is a very clean looking Mazda. There's not a lot of hard angles. Let's take a look at the brake and reverse lights. As we look in the back, the opening part is actually right underneath that logo. So that's kind of cool. There is a turbo badge back here because we have the turbo model. And look, you even get a semi-bright light coming from the left side. And I like how it's actually elevated so it shines down on the cargo. That looks like an LED bulb. So this is actually pretty bright and usable for the hatchback space. And for real dark scenarios, your lock button's even illuminated. Now from here, look at this paint. It's such a deep red paint. And like I said, it looks a little more orange on the camera, but it's just a gorgeous paint. Then as we look in the back, I'll talk more about space and all of that in the full review, but you've got LED lighting that illuminates this back seat really well. There is an illuminated lock button back here, but that's it. And then climbing into the front seat, first of all, there's no puddle light coming from the mirror. There's no illuminated door handles or special approach lighting. You can get an illuminated sill plate as an accessory, but we don't have it on our model. But as we take a peek inside, we've got more LED lights. It's pretty bright in this cabin. We've got leather seats on this Premium Plus. And check out the full review for more details. But let's hop in. Okay, now we're on the inside and obviously I have the overhead light on. This interior is very simple, but it's also very dark, which some of you love. Some of you want some ambient lighting, but let me show you what it's like when it's real dark. So now I have the overhead light off, but over on the door, you've got some nice lighting. You've got illuminated lock buttons, all your window switches and mirror controls are nicely backlit. Your memory settings for your seats and then all of the controls up above, like your camera parking sensors, those are all backlit too. Steering wheel lights are also nicely illuminated, both left and right side. Then to adjust your interior brightness, the control is right up by the gauge cluster. So for example, check out all the brightness next to these climate controls. I'm brightening it and then dimming it. I love how you have physical controls that you can easily get to and make it as dark or light as you want. Mazda's display is very simplified in front. You've got a pretty large seven inch display in the middle. It doesn't give you quite as much information as some other competitors, but it's very crisp, very clean, and I'll cover that more in the full review. Right in front of us, we get Mazda's active driving display. So it gives you a good amount of information, even your blind spots, things like that, but you've got a head up display if you want it. Then as we come across, we've got Mazda's 8.8 inch screen, which is controlled with the command knob, just like before and other Mazda products. It's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is not wired, but you still have this screen. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but otherwise it's very easy to navigate. And you can go to settings and then you go to uh, vehicle settings and this is where you can do some of your lighting controls like exterior lighting you can determine whether or not your automatic high beams are on with that your, even your adaptive front lights daytime running lights and how long everything lasts with that even some interior lighting but the only thing is that you just have this il illuminated entry on the inside of the vehicle you don't have approach lighting necessarily or any ambient lighting at all it's really dark in here so for example a lot of competitors will give you illuminated like footwells or door pockets or something along the dash or even sometimes there's some up overhead but there is zip zero zilch in this car 
you have dual zone climate control and all of that is illuminated there's not a button left unlit one thing i would like to see if i turn this on there's a little storage area down there there's zero lighting there's no backlighting for that usb port cup holders nothing like that you've got illumination next to your shifter and then your command knob down here of course is going to have some lighting for your shortcuts parking brake things like that your volume knob is down here too so that has lighting but there's zero extra lighting that includes this armrest. There is zero lighting in here whatsoever. Even just a little bit in there would be nice. The glove box doesn't even have any lighting. It just has some outside lighting coming in. But one good thing is you've got an automatic dimming rear view mirror. This is part of our premium plus package. Then you've got LED lighting up overhead. So you have an illuminated button to turn them all on or illuminated buttons to do one side or the other. And then you can press that one to determine whether or not the lights come on when you open the door. And then you've got a really bright vanity light as well. And in case some of you miss it, one thing I want you to know is that side driver's side mirror is also automatic dimming on our premium plus. That's actually a really nice feature. And we have push button starting here and watch these adaptive headlights. When you turn the car on, they always do a little swivel and balance out. So these are the low beams on right now. You can see the cutoff line that is pretty good and it spans out a decent ways so we'll see how wide they are it's definitely wide off to the right side that dip in the middle is normal to prevent oncoming traffic and this is a pretty solid line compared to a lot of vehicles turn the high beams on really bright right in front not too low not super wide either we don't have any fog lights so i can't comment on that but these headlights with the adaptive function get the best possible rating from the IIHS, largely because of the adaptive function. The non-adaptive regular LED lights get an acceptable rating, which is the second from the best. So they all do fairly well. Now here's a look off into the distance. So you can kind of get a long distance look. So compared to some of the competitors, that uh, passenger side light is well above the red post and fire hydrant. It's about usual, kind of the typical cutoff line at the bottom of the hill on the left. That's to help prevent blinding oncoming drivers. And then you've got the high beams. Those are pretty bright and pretty high. Let's get out on the road. All right, y'all, let's get going on this test drive in this Mazda 3 hatchback. So this is the turbo model. If you want to see more about the driving impressions, be sure to check out the daytime review, which will follow this video. You can find it in the description below. Now, a quick note about the automatic high beams is that there's a little button on the end of the stock, your blinker stock. You can push that button to turn the automatic high beams on or off. So that's nice. Otherwise, you can use the high beams like normal, moving the stock forward and backwards. But I want you to get an idea of what it's like to drive with these adaptive headlights at night so you get a feel if you're looking to buy this car or if you just like to watch it like I do. But I'll try to talk about how well this does compared to some competitors. I just recently had a Honda Civic out here. So be sure to check that one out. That does not have the adaptive headlights. It does have a little bit of ambient lighting inside, but not a lot. But like I said, most of this won't be about driving impressions. We'll get on a dark road in a second to where you can get a really good close-up look from another camera. But since we have the turbo, I feel like we just have to get on it a little bit. About 320 pound-feet of torque with premium fuel, 310 with regular fuel. And obviously from the start, it's not ideal. Didn't floor it right away, but we're just coasting along and you don't need a lot of pedal to get some punch. Boom. Oh yeah, that was just partial throttle. And this, this car pulls. It's all wheel drive as well with this turbo. But right off the bat, I have the automatic high beams on. And so far, they have not turned on to blind this car in front of me. We'll get on a dark road in a second, but a quick note, automatic dimming rear view mirror, automatic dimming driver's side mirror, which is actually really nice. If you have somebody behind you with bright lights or a lifted truck or something, that really helps out. But even with the well-lit road here, I can still see the beam pattern of these LEDs. They definitely do a good job, but let's go ahead and get on a dark road and see how everything does. All right, we're about to get on a dark road. And the one thing I wish this car had was at least an option to have a little bit of gentle ambient lighting glow, but it doesn't have much at all inside. If you love a dark interior, you'll love this. If you love ambient lighting, you'll be disappointed. But automatic high beams are on. They turned on right away. 
cresting over the hill. I can see off into the distance really well. Now I'm turning on just the low beams here. I wanna see how they do with the adaptive function going around. I can see into that corner, good enough. I can't always see into the corner with other cars, but watch the headlights. They're starting to travel up the road. That looks good. They definitely have a, a definitive bright spot where the adaptive function moves. So on any corner, you're gonna get those headlights to move. And you can even turn those off if you want. I turned the high beams back on for the automatic function and it's good. I don't know if they're quite as good as some, but they are still good. Definitely bright in front. Now just the low beams here. Now watch this. If I start to kind of swerve a little bit, you can really see how well those headlights actually move on a dark surface like this. They do their best turning to the right. So as I turn right here, there's another car. I turn the automatic high beams on and boom, the high beams just kick back on. The adaptive function worked well. The adaptive function also works with the high beams too. So it's not just the low beams. High beams are on and the high beams shut off probably because of that street light and now they're back on. And I got good distance. I can see the road markers really well. Now let me do just the low beams. The low beam distance is still good. It's, it's not as good as some, but the distance is good enough, especially in the corners. Now, as far as peripheral vision, I can see like into the ditch pretty well, actually, a, a better than I thought I would, considering we don't have fog lights. Um, so the width of these headlights is still good, especially for this class. Now I'm turning the automatic function on and hopefully we can get a little bit of oncoming traffic, but I'd love to hear your thoughts below. Do you want a little bit of ambient lighting in here or are you content with it the way it is? Do you like this white backlighting for all the buttons or do you prefer like a light blue or red or something like that? Leave your thoughts below. But most of the time, you know, we get some crossing traffic in front of us. Our high beams were on and the high beams stayed on. So those people got a little bit of blinding on them, which is common. Most vehicles don't turn their high beams off, but we've got another car coming and it kept the high beams on, unfortunately, which I normally would have shut them off. They shut off because we got to a low speed. Uh, so that's one consideration. A little turbo action here. And you can see that the high beams kicked on on their own. So high beams are on. There is, okay, there's a car that just came up and the high beams turned off right away. That's always good. You want some quick high beams. Hopefully they turn on quickly. And they did, they just turned on. Not too much of a delay and they turned back off probably because of the street light. No, no, they turned back on again. They're a little indecisive. This is a good road. Oh. There's somebody on the left and they did not turn off until the last second. So they, those people, those poor people had the high beams in their eyes the whole time. So the system isn't perfect, but it is still good. On most roads, you can trust the high beams and the adaptive lights are very nice and welcome, especially in this class of a car. But let's go ahead and uh, close out on this night review. If you enjoyed it, subscribe below and be sure to check out the full review if you want to see more, have a great night.